Hello everyone my name is Ethan and in this video we'll talk about new tropics. Can smart drugs really make you smarter? The last video has shown us that the best way to strengthen the brain really is just to use the brain and to use it in lots of novel scenarios and to practice things to get better at them. What a surprise, strengthening the brain requires effort and practice. Just like strengthening the body, nothing worth having comes easy. So they say, but this is going to seem like bad news for a lot of people and even though I basically just told you to play computer games in order to get smarter. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't want to train our brains to get smarter. We just want easy answers. This is the same reason that 90% of people never end up sticking to their training regimes. It's too hard. They want the body, the strength and the confidence, but they don't want to put in the work. Normally, I would say too bad. But as it happens, there may be a way you can jump ahead and get the results you want more quickly. And that answer is to use smart drugs. Let's take a closer look at this concept. How it works and whether it is for you. What is a nootropic? A nootropic, also called a smart drug, is any form of medication or supplementation that can make you objectively smarter in some capacity. This might mean that you improve your memory, your focus, your creativity or something else. Either way. New tropics are to the brain what supplements and steroids are to the body. But are they safe? And do they work? That all depends on what kind of new tropic you intend on using. Right now, reports tell us that somewhere around 90% of executives and CEOs across America are using new tropics of various descriptions in order to get an edge on their competition. These help them stay up later, be more confident during presentations, and generally perform their very best. One of the most popular forms of tropic to this end is modafinil. Modafinil is a new tropic that works by increasing the amount of a neurotransmitter called orexin in the brain. This neurotransmitter is at least partly responsible for regulating the brain's sleep and wake cycle, along with various other bodily functions like appetite and bowel movements. Modafinil was originally designed as a way to treat narcolepsy, a condition that causes people to fall asleep for no reason and without warning but it was found that it could also improve various other functions like memory, attention, and reflexes. This is because it can also increase dopamine, along with various other important neurotransmitters. There are no known side effects and the pill has a half-life of 10 hours. So in theory, a CEO can pop one in the morning and then be more alert, more focused, and less sleepy for a whole 10-hour day. Another example is pyrocetam. Pyrocetam is nootropic that increases acetylcholine in the brain. Acetylcholine is a generic excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain, meaning it generally increases the firing rates of neurons. This results in the brain becoming more alive and subjectively this might make you feel more awake, more alert and more vividly aware of your senses. Pyrocetam takes longer to take effect and needs to build up in your system over time. But a lot of people find the effects very pleasant without any notable downsides. On the other end of the spectrum, you have things like 5-HTP. 5-HTP is 5-hydroxytryptophan, which is a precursor to tryptophan, which is itself a precursor to serotonin. Precursor means building block, by the way, meaning that the brain uses these chemicals to make other chemicals. Serotonin is the feel-good neurotransmitter and is also somewhat inhibitory. All this means that serotonin can help to make you feel relaxed and happy at the same time and thereby combat stress. Serotonin also converts into melatonin which is the sleep neurotransmitter, which makes 5-HTP a useful sleep aid when used just before bed. A CEO might use something like 5-HTP to come down after a stressful day then, to perform better during a presentation by calming nerves, or just to sleep more deeply leading to a more productive day the next day. Should you use these kinds of nootropics? So now the big question. Should you use these kinds of nootropics? Of course this is up to you but as general advice. The answer would have to be no. There are no known side effects for something like modafinil or pyrocetam but that is not to say that there are definitely zero issues. These substances have not been tested for the long term. So no one knows what would happen were you to use them over a 10 year period. Not only that but it's also a little concerning that we don't know precisely how many of these new tropics work. 5-HTP we understand, but it's not known precisely how modafinil impacts on orexin, only that it does. It's completely uncertain how modafinil achieves its other benefits meanwhile. And while there are no official side effects, 
I can personally tell you that this isn't entirely the case, for starters. It's well known that modafinil will make you need to go to the toilet a lot, while also suppressing your appetite. This is of course a result of it altering the regulation of various bodily rhythms. I also found that modafinil made me bite the insides of my lips a lot, as well as grind my teeth. Likely simply a result of having lots of stimulatory neurotransmitters running around my brain. Hyrsetam will give you a headache unless you stack it with choline and many people find that even then. They can end up with both headaches and brain fog. Some people have reported feeling permanent brain fog as a result of using pyrocetan. Modafinil also makes me so focused that it isn't always a good thing. When I use it, I become glued to whatever it is I'm doing. If that's work, great. I will then be completely transfixed on work until I finish. But if I have a quick go on a computer game before I start working, then there's a good chance I'm not going to be able to stop. I'm going to complete that computer game before I get any work done. Likewise, crossing the road can become dangerous as I find myself so engaged in what I'm thinking that I can't properly pay attention to the road or to noises. Movement in my environment. I also find it harder to be creative and this follows seeing as an increase in dopamine and norepinephrine is actually associated with a decrease in creativity. We are at our most creative when we are relaxed because this allows our mind to wander. The neuroscience behind this is that our brain is forming new connections between disparate neurons that would normally never be associated, which is how invention happens. But when you're highly focused, you become too fixated on one thing and this stymies creativity. The point of all this, the brain operates the way it does for a purpose. Optimum brain function is not about being able to focus on one thing for a long time. Optimum brain function is about being able to switch from one brain state to another as necessary. You need to be highly focused while you're working and then relaxed when you're not. You need to let your mind wander when you're trying to come up with new ideas and then focus up when you're asked a difficult question. When you artificially increase too much of a certain neurotransmitter, you make it very hard to do this and you get stuck in one state. It feels optimum but in fact it's just an artificial high. Another problem with these types of neurotransmitters is that they can actually be addictive because of something called tolerance and dependence. What happens here is that the brain adapts to that increased or decreased neurochemical. For example, if you have artificially increased the amount of dopamine in your brain on a regular occurrence, then your brain might respond by removing dopamine receptors to make the brain less responsive to it. Alternatively, it might reduce the amount of dopamine you naturally produce. In short, you now need a bigger dose of the same substance in order to get the same feeling as before. And eventually, your baseline can become so low that you feel bad until you get it. While modafinil and pyrocetam aren't officially supposed to be addictive, 5-HTP actually can be and is better avoided for this reason. That and essentially making your brain sleepy is not the solution to heighten social skills and confidence. Neurotransmitters do not exist in a vacuum. As though all that wasn't enough reason. It's also important to recognize that neurotransmitters do not exist in a vacuum. That is to say that any one neurotransmitter you alter will automatically impact on many others and have other effects on the body. We've already seen, for instance, that serotonin converts to melatonin and that orexin affects our hunger and bowel movement. Then there's the fact that serotonin links to appetite and that cortisol, which is also linked with dopamine, affects our testosterone level. There are undoubtedly countless neurotransmitters that we have yet to even discover. And what this means is that when you take a new tropic that affects one neurotransmitter, you really make all kinds of untold changes in your brain without really knowing what the consequences of that action might be. For this reason, it's highly advisable to focus on other ways to get your mental upgrade. What about caffeine? But there is a new tropic that most of us already use on a regular basis. That new tropic is of course caffeine which is the secret ingredient in tea and coffee that makes us wake up in the morning and feel more alert. This is just like any other new tropic. The only difference being that it has been around longer and is therefore a little more commonplace. So how does caffeine works? Basically, caffeine is able to mimic a neurotransmitter in the brain called adenosine. Adenosine is a byproduct of the energy process in the brain. When your mitochondria utilize glucose for energy, they do this by converting it first to ATP which means adenosine triphosphate and then breaking that ATP apart into its constituent parts, including adenosine. Adenosine builds up throughout the day then as we use our brain cells for thinking, moving and powering our bodies. But this substance is inhibitory and over time makes us become tireder and sleepier. 
Eventually, we become so sluggish that we're forced to go to bed and a good night's sleep is then able to flush our brain of the excess adenosine ready for morning. What caffeine does is to block the adenosine receptors, because caffeine is a similar shape to adenosine. It can plug the holes where adenosine is supposed to go and that then prevents adenosine from working its magic. This makes us feel more awake and alert and causes a spike in brain activity. This spike in brain activity then results in a flood of other excitatory neurotransmitters being released, which include dopamine, norepinephrine and more. So is it safe to use? Will caffeine give you a healthy kick? Yes. And. No. On the one hand, caffeine has actually been shown in studies to reduce your chances of developing Alzheimer's and in that sense it is neuroprotective. It does enhance wakefulness and memory and it's relatively very safe. At the same time though, Caffeine is also essentially stress in a cup. It works by increasing many of our stress hormones and this can decrease creativity, while also causing numerous other problems. More worryingly, caffeine is addictive owing to the mechanisms we described earlier. If you become dependent on caffeine, you'll find you can get raging headaches whenever you go long periods without it. What's more, it has actually been suggested that what many of us think of as morning grogginess is actually just a withdrawal symptom from caffeine. In other words, we wake up and feel sluggish because we've gone for so long without caffeine. It's really up to you if you take it or not but this is an excellent demonstration of the risks associated with nootropics versus the benefit. My advice is to think of all these nootropics like laser tools. Stay away from them 90% of the time but when you absolutely need to get a huge amount of work done, consider using one just for that day. Thanks for watching this video. We are going to create more video about mindset, goal setting, power of your brain and more psychology tips. Also watch our recent video about how to increase your brain power with brain training. And please do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. We will be back with more videos.